Earlier this year, there's been news released on some of the rapid developments for Nibiru's EVM. What is Nibiru EVM and why has that been such a huge focus for the team? If you recall our roadmap graphic from like late last year and also early this year, around the time of the mainnet, it went over quite a few things, right? Which is bridge connections, development on a couple dApps, both from like the foundation side and then also to onboard some of the ecosystem, parallel execution, and then of course at Nibiru EVM. So we were able to address all of those basically. Of course, the EVM portion being like a much bigger undertaking overall, because it's a, a big upgrade, but essentially Nibiru EVM is a fully backward compatible upgrade to Nibiru that makes it an EVM equivalent execution environment. So essentially that means that it supports the Ethereum JSON RPC interface. So you can write contracts in Solidity or Viper, usually that's Solidity, right? And then deploy that bytecode and use tools like Ethers, MetaMask, and everything out of the box with no code changes. So that sounds simple, but like, what does that kind of mean is essentially that uh, that enables you to have, you know, Uniswap deployments, Aave deployments, basically anything from the Ethereum L1 or L2 ecosystem can a lot easier interact with the chain, both in terms of like explorers and the applications, but basically that it means that the surface of users and apps that you can interact with grows tenfold or more, right? Since development began earlier this year, that's been like our top priority from the building side of the chain. I guess the development started around halfway through the year when we first started hinting at usable releases in June. So since then, we've been focused on bringing it to the point of, you know, security audits and, and mainnet readiness. The strategy here was to keep releasing it so that builders could constantly use the Nibiru EVM releases like under our feet and give a lot of like real-time feedback or help us figure out which things to prioritize or eliminate from scope before like, you know, developing something in isolation and then just releasing it. Right. So you guys don't get to see that as much from like the main front end, unless you are curious and click over to test net, but so that there's been huge progress there. I mean, I guess I'll touch on that a little bit later on, on some, like the more specific dates, but maybe a, another part you, you touched on was why is that been a focus? So predictably so at least from our side, but on the few chains, we've seen add EVM support that already run another VM, which isn't a case in this case, I'm referring to maybe say network and injective both because both of those have EVM and Wasm VM, right? Adding EVM support has positively impacted their usage and utility by a lot. I haven't checked this figure in a while, but the last time I checked, there's several billion transactions between those two chains and more than 90% of the transactions are EVM, even though that VM was added much later. So if you return to the, the earliest point in Nibiru's project history, like before it launched and was just forming in 2022, Wasm was like, the second most prominent uh, smart contract layer after Ethereum's EVM in terms of user adoption. So Terra was pulling ahead of Solana for a short time at one point, right? It was becoming very popular to build with Rust-based contracts as a clear choice and direction for security or performance.